Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service this morning on Zoom, our 9.30 service. Uh, welcome all YouTubers as well, who will be seeing it later. So let's begin by turning, uh, well, reading together, if, uh, if you would like to join me, our sentence of the day on our pew sheets. Why, Why do, do you spend your money for that, that which is not bread, and, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. And we're on Second Order Holy Communion, which is on page 119 of our prayer books. Page 119. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, God to, to whom all hearts are open, open all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Point nine on page one two one. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, whose Son Jesus fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us with your true and living bread, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we have our readings. Kay, are you reading? First reading is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 26 to 12 and 13a. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent, sent Nathan to David. And here were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had been, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meagre fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveller to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are that man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. 
Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken... Will we keep going ourselves? His wife to be your wife to me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbour and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of his very son. For you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Nathan said, David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan said to David, Now the Lord has put away your sin. You shall not die. Hear the word, hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm, I'm just going to put my dog out. Sorry. Okay, I'll read. Oh, who's leading the song? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was the Lord of me. That was the word of me. Okay, our psalm is Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12, and it's found on page 274 of our prayer book. Have mercy on me, O God, in your enduring goodness. According to the fullness of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash, Wash me thoroughly from, from my wickedness and, and cleanse me from, from my sin. For I acknowledge my rebellion and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done, done what is evil in your eyes. So you will be just in your sentence and blameless in your judging. Surely in wickedness I was brought to birth, and in sin my mother conceived me. You that desire truth in the inward parts, O oh, teach me wisdom in the secret places of the heart. <coughs> Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make, Make me hear of joy and gladness, let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me out from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Oh, give, give me the gladness of your help again and support me with the willing spirit. Our second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, 
to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro, blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 6, verses 24 to 35. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Lord, may your word seep, sink deep into our being today and the days ahead. May your voice, Lord, be heard by us above all other voices. May your spirit guide us, strengthen us, give us the courage we need at times to be your followers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Paul's sense of calling to discipleship and indeed to apostleship is so definite and so profound that he describes himself as a prisoner in the Lord. Turning now in chapter 4, verse 1, to set out in the rest of the letter the conduct expected of Christ's disciples from you and me, both individually and corporately. Paul applies the doctrine previously set out in chapters 1 to 3 of Ephesians. The seriousness of Paul's directive is emphasised and backed up by his reference to his authority to speak to them as one who is a prisoner of the Lord for their benefit. In using the word prisoner, Paul paints for us a picture in our minds. Our general knowledge kicks in and we, when we hear the word prisoner and we immediately know all the negative connotations. Prisoners are not free to do whatever they choose. Prisoners are governed strictly by the limitations placed on them by their captors. Prisoners display recognisable unity because they are part of a prison system. We think, well, I think of the orange jumpsuits in the United States of America. They're also recognised by the permitted conduct within the prison system. In this instance, however, 
Paul wraps all this up in a positive framework of his imprisonment as being for their benefit. Paul's heart has been captured by Christ's love and not even imprisonment can dampen Paul's devotion to Christ and to the Ephesians. During Jeffrey's sermon, he spoke of the great blessings that come with our calling. We are blessed because the Father selected us, the Son redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit sealed us with, as God's own. Jeffrey reminded us of Paul's prayer for the believers to know God and know the hope of our calling. We were reminded of God's power that enables believers to fulfil their calling. Doctrine and duty are kept in balance in Ephesians as they are in the book of Romans. Paul writes three chapters of doctrine and three chapters of application in Ephesians, with Ephesians 4 verse 1 being the pivotal point in the letter. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. The phrase to live a life worthy isn't in the original Greek. It says, I exhort you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. What we do, the way we live, must be based on our doctrinal beliefs. In Romans, Paul writes 11 chapters of doctrine before writing the well-known pivotal verse in 12 verse 1. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. We notice the similarity of these two verses. Paul uses the imperative 41 times in Ephesians, only once in chapters 1 to 3, in chapter 2 verse 11, but 40 times in chapters 3, 4 to 6. As Christians, we must walk worthy as individuals and we must walk worthy as a corporate body together. As Donald Hagner explains, in theology, head knowledge alone will make little difference in individual or corporate lives. And practice without theological knowledge has the potential to lead to heretical practice. The distinctiveness of the gospel necessarily defines the scope of our individual and corporate lives. If we truly believe that Jesus is the King of King, Kings and the Lord of Lords, we must also recognise that we are captive to Christ and to him alone. When we commit ourselves to this calling, we can be assured that God will empower us through his Holy Spirit to live in accordance with God's word in the Bible. We are called to live in humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, making every effort, effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In humility, we need to sit under the word of God, letting the scriptures interrogate us. Here, Paul is talking about the unity of the spirit that came into being upon the death of Christ between Jews and Gentiles. When these two distinct people groups became one new nation in Christ. In Christ, God is still calling into a new humanity, people from every tribe and nation, from every language group on earth. As an aside, it was amazing 
Yesterday when I was watching the Olympics, seeing people cross themselves, people from all over the planet were doing it and I rejoiced. Converts coming out of every conceivable religious system make up the Bride of Christ and unity is only possible because they are bound together by their biblical worldview and their biblical practice. That's what verse 4 is saying. And they reach maturity together. It's only when each individual uses his or her Christ-given gifts to build up the body that the individual becomes mature and the whole body reaches the full stature of Christ. We hear the singularity of the word one over and over here in verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The Jewish Messiah is the Greek Christ. Jesus is the Anointed One, the Lord. And his Lordship necessarily subjugates in us our old ways of thinking and behaving and at the same time liberates us from all other worldly priorities and motivations of the heart. We become captive to Christ's love, safe from all that would destroy our freedom. There's only one way to freedom, make no mistake. In a world ruled by the devil, being in Christ is the best place to be. Before we jump to any universalistic conclusions about the oneness that we hear about, we need to read on to the specifics of how this came to be. Each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. Paul reinterprets Psalm 68, particularly verse 18, a song of victory over God's enemies. And Paul reinterprets it here to apply it to Christ's victory being not over the enemies of Israel, rather over Satan, sin and death. All over the planet, Christ, the King, has taken out of the captivity they were held in by the devil and given them gifts to build up his body, his one new nation on earth. As the apostle to the Gentiles, Paul was called to obedience to the cause of Christ. And he was gifted to do his apostolic ministry. The two aspects of calling and gifting come together hand in glove. Paul suffered literal imprisonment, but Paul is captive to Christ's mission and Christ's ministry on earth. The prison epistles, Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians and Philemon were written in obedience while Paul was held captive in jail. These letters resulted from Paul's obedience to Christ's cause. They were written because of Christ's gift of apostleship, which equipped him. But the gifts of Christ to his church are not just for the here and now. Verse 9 and 10 emphasise the eternal nature of Christ's victory. The victory is comprehensive. It takes captives out of this world's systems of belief and behaviour and raises them up into heavenly realms, raising them up 
and setting eternity in their hearts. And why does Christ do all of this? So that he might fill all things to the glory of God the Father. It's Christ's intention to fill all things. It's certainly his intention to fill his church. And he achieves this through the giving of himself to her in and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the giving of gifts for the unity of the body so that the church matures into the full stature of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 speaks of Christ's descent and Christ's ascent for our salvation to the glory of God the Father. He exhorts us to be of one mind with Christ, saying, Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others better than yourselves. Let each of you not look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You can't be more comprehensive than that. By definition, the Lordship of Jesus is all-encompassing. There is no other name by which humankind can be saved. What is unique about Christianity is that Jesus is fully God and fully human. And in his uniqueness, descended from on high to die on a cross for us. Jesus is the way because of that. And no one else can take his place. Having become the victor over Satan and death, Christ equips his church to minister to a dying world, a world that is passing away. Jesus equips his church today because today is the day of salvation. Today it's our responsibility to continue his work in the world. It's our responsibility to both propagate and protect the gospel message that we have been given. And this becomes obvious when we, walk, when we look at the list of gifts in verse 11. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. Which other religion can fulfil the purpose for which these gifts are given? The answer is simple. No other religion or system of belief can do that. How do we propagate and protect the message we have received? Paul says we do it first by sorting out our theology. 
We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. We must talk the talk and walk the walk and we must do it together. It's clear from this verse that Paul exhorts the Ephesians to walk worthily of their calling, resisting those who oppose and question the distinctiveness of his gospel message. And he exhorts his readers to do one thing in response, but speaking the truth in love. Talking the talk. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, each part working properly promotes the body's growth in building itself up. That's walking the walk, building the body up in love as we all do our part, using our gifts. Some of us living lives worthy of our calling will mean formal theological study. For all of us, it will mean sorting out our theological beliefs so that we can all grow up to the full stature of Christ in our minds and in our practice, fulfilling Christ's mission on earth. The college that I studied at has this as its mission statement. Our mission at Ridley College is to equip men and women for God's mission in a rapidly changing and increasingly complex world. God has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light of the gospel. And we need to walk in the light of that victory every day until our last day on earth. As Christ's body on earth, we preach Christ crucified. We teach Christ crucified. We follow Christ crucified and we trust Christ crucified. Why? Because in a world with a multitude of ideologies and religious systems, only the gospel of Jesus' life, death and resurrection saves. And each time a sinner receives God's gifts of salvation, God the Father is glorified in Christ and in his church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your word is truth. Sanctify us in the truth and protect us from the evil one, just as Jesus prayed you would. Amen. Sure. Please turn with us to page 123 of our prayer books and let's affirm, to, affirm together the faith of the church. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather together today in your name to worship you and to pray to you, uh, to ask of you. We thank you for the blessings that we have, for the, the gifts the, for, for each other, for the gift of Bishop Paul's talks on Esther and clarification that he brought to that book, that wonderful book. And so, Lord, we gather today uh, and we bring our petitions, our requests, our hearts, our desires and our plans to you. So your response when you hear Jesus in your mercy uh, will be, hear the prayers we offer. Jesus, bread of the world, receive our prayers for all your people. For those who hunger for freedom, for justice, for release from poverty and disease, for all who struggle for the peace and welfare of this world. We pray in particular, Lord, for a de-escalation of tensions between China and other nations, such as the US, and also with Australia, Lord. We ask that the leaders will have compassion, will sit down and they will communicate when we are greedy and take what is not ours, when we stockpile food which while others starve, while we gather things together and others go without, put a right spirit within us that we may share with justice the resources of the earth and feed your hungry people and to give to those who go without. Jesus, in your mercy, Hear the prayers we offer. Jesus, food of pilgrims, receive our prayers for your body, the church, for all who hunger to know your forgiveness and your love, for all teachers and pastors, <coughs> our Archbishop Philip, our Bishop Paul, and all who bring good news to others. When we preach a message, when we speak, a message that's neither satisfy nor disturbs. When our divisions and discord make your gospel hard to hear, empower your church anew, give life to your church, that we may be strengthened for your ministry and feed your hungry people. Jesus, in your mercy, hear the prayers we offer. Jesus, true and living bread, Receive our prayers for this community, for the people amongst whom we live, for those whose daily needs for food and shelter are unmet, for those whose longings for recognition and love go unsatisfied, for our neighbours, our families and all whom we hold dear. When we turn away from the needs of those around us, when our relationships with others are unforgiving and unkind, help us grow into your likeness, that we may bring your love to others and feed your hungry people. Jesus, in your mercy, hear the prayers we offer. Jesus, bread of life, receive our prayers for all who are in need. For all in anguish, sorrow, confusion or fear. For all who are sick or in pain. We remember Luke this morning, Lord, and we give thanks that he is well now and we may, may you preserve that. Bring you Christine, Sandra, Enid, Cornelius, Frank and Norma. Justin, Lord, who has had a recurrence of cancer, for Kelly, for Mel as she prepares for an operation on September the 3rd, Annette, Kevin and Evelyn, 
We pray for Winston, who is struggling with his health at the moment, for Ranji, Lord, and for her continued healing and strengthening. We remember Neil, Lord, who needs to have open heart surgery soon. And we pray for all who are on our hearts, those who are struggling, even for ourselves, Lord, as some of us may be struggling. For all who, whose names are in the book on the altar here at St John's. When we wander in the desolate places of life, when we abandon ourselves to your goodness, fill our emptiness and satisfy our longings, make us courageous in adversity and give us all compassion for all who suffer, that we may feed your hungry people. Jesus, in your mercy, hear the prayers we offer. We remember our athletes who are overseas at the moment and the gathering of all the athletes at the Olympics in Tokyo. We pray that you will keep them safe at this time. It's a risky time for them, not just in terms of injury, but also as they gather at this time of COVID when Tokyo is struggling. So we pray for each one of them, Lord, that you will keep them safe. Jesus, in your mercy, Hear the prayers we offer. Jesus, bread of heaven, we remember all those who have died in the faith. We give you thanks for them, for the prophets and the apostles, for martyrs and evangelists, for the faithful people of this parish who have gone before us. In life, feed us and sustain us. And at our death, Open the doors of heaven to us, that in the company of all who believe in you, we may be welcome to you your eter and your eternal presence. Jesus, in your mercy, hear the prayers we offer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let us pray. We, we do, do not presume to come to, come to your table, table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful, Merciful God, God, our, our maker, maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in units of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit, spirit is with us. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And all, also. We're also with you. And it's, uh, we can unmute and greet each other if you like. Peace, peace with you. Peace. Peace, peace everybody. Peace, peace, peace to everyone. Those, peace to those peace on peace YouTube. Everybody. Peace. 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 Yeah, she's in bed. <laughs> <laughs> good. good for you. Yeah. And um, so we'll all mute again, and we. And thank back. you, Cheryl. Food. Yeah. Okay. And we remember the gifts are uh, given this morning as well. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Thanksgiving prayer number one on page 128. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift with them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels we, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for this gift of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shared for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing, Blessing and honour and, and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. ever. Amen. Page 141. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so, so may, may your church, church be gathered from, from the ends of the earth, earth in, into, into your, your kingdom. kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me in eternal life. And the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me in eternal life. On the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. 
We're on page 143 of our prayer books, Prayer A, and then over the page for our prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love, accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and help us to grow in love and obedience, that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So a few notices. Um, if we keep going the way we are in terms of the community and the COVID, spread of COVID, we've had some, as we know, some exposure sites around Frankston. Hopefully that will resolve this week and I hope we can certainly meet again together soon. Um, Bishop Paul's talks on Esther, for those who haven't seen them, would like to see them. They are recorded and they're on the GWAC website. So you can go on there, www.gwac.org.au and then go to the... Um, the tab, that's a little tab, tab and yeah. you go down to videos. Yeah, you, you see the videos there. So it's pretty easy to find a way around there as well. Um, so that, that's good. Uh, we hope the op shop will be open this week as well. And we continue to pray for our athletes who are overseas. They're doing really well. So that's fantastic that the way that Australia's been going. Uh, I don't have any other notices here. Uh, we have a birthday. Doug, Doug is, um, as we know, living in Cranden now, Doug Cook. And Ella Smith, well, she's not here either at the moment, so, so we won't sing, but we'll keep them in mind as well in, and, and in our prayers. Any other notices? No other notices? Yes, Sylvia. Good morning service be on on Wednesday. Oh, yeah, we're well, yeah, well, morning service, so 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, at this stage, um, I think we could probably have it we could probably meet together, on, I'm not sure yet, but I, that would be my hope, that we could meet together. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we will have it on Zoom if we can't. Okay. So one way or the other, it will be available. And if it's, so just watch out for a link. Uh, if you see a link, it'll be on Zoom. Thank okay, you. great. Okay, so now we've, we're, we're, I'm gonna, we're not gonna close down. Um, YouTubers, uh, uh, we're on Zoom here. So we keep the link open, we're gonna have morning tea. So that means a walk with us through the car park, uh, <laughs> back to the, the vicarage for, for those who wanna to continue to join us. And we'll just finish off, uh, we'll do the dismissal here. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And that means that we say farewell to our YouTubers at this point. Lord keep you and bless you.